So I'm going to do the next intro a little bit different to kind of bring in a little bit more uh, uh, close, I guess. Megan, do you mind joining me up here? I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to intro you up here as opposed to, so a lot of the people I've just met today, so it's really difficult for me to give a really detailed <laughs> intro when I just meet them today. So what I want to do is almost do like a little bit of a Q&A intro because most of them are really afraid to kind of brag about themselves because it might, you know, it might come across, you know, I don't know, arrogant or something like that. But I really want you guys to know what is special about these people and why they're up here talking because um, I, I'm really excited about them. So Megan, do you mind kind of talking about what, what gives, what is the expertise you have specifically that allows you to be up here and talking to a room full of really smart, really good people. I'm putting you on the spot, but this isn't bragging. This is just you and I having a conversation. Um, I would say I freaking love this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I love, I love EPCs. I love ASINs. I love, <laughs> I just love it. Um, I don't even really know what you're talking about. That's okay. And, and most people don't. But I just, the, the mechanics of, of how you get something from here to there on a screen is, is absolutely my favorite thing on the planet. Cool. So you started One Stone with Bill Waitsman, who I do know. Yes. Because him and I sat for years watching volleyball together on uh, weekends because our yeah, daughters yeah. played volleyball together. Mm -hmm. Tell me about you guys starting that. And now, hopefully, I'm not taking your presentation, no. but I just want to no. get everyone to know you a little bit more before no. we get going. Um, well, I, uh, I relocated from the West Coast, um, a little town uh, up in the Pacific Northwest that has a small retailer um, <laughs> up there, and um, love that retailer. And uh, as, as, um, as Doug McMillan and Mark were putting together stuff here, um, I just thought, this is where I got to be. I got to figure this stuff out. Um, so every, any competition with two really strong players is a lot more fun than, than one, so. Cool, awesome. Well, as you could tell, I, I'm a little bit biased on Bentonville, and yes, I am a part of the Chamber of Commerce, and it, <laughs> people sometimes think I'm the president of it. No, I'm not, but I am a part of it on the Chamber. But what I want to do, I want to introduce Megan Bowman, take it over, Great. and uh, thanks Great. for being with us today. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Clinton JD, uh, just so you guys know, I'm not a great speaker, so I'll, I'll read a lot of notes because there's good stuff in here. But um, uh, today we're going to talk about the omni world of Walmart platforms, playgrounds, and passageways. Um, Clinton JD, thank you. Great insights. Where are you guys? Into where we're heading. Hey, guys. Um, and before I begin, I want to I get a show of hands. Um, and uh, I don't see a lot of you guys with stickers on your laptops. You are clearly from the Midwest, um, and you're clearly over the age of 22. Um, so we're going to give you guys some stickers. You can put them on your laptop, or you can put them on your kid's laptop. Um, one thing I love about this one is it says, I'm, I'm driven to buck the system. And guess who said it? Sam Walton. Um, and so we're going to honor him a little bit. Um, who with the, I'm going to call you guys a squad, right? Because I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. Who within this squad is on the retailer side of the equation? Um, you are, I don't know, from uh, here, you're in, Benton, or you're in Bentonville, you're in Bruno, you're in Hoboken. Is anybody here within the retailer side? That's awesome. I was nervous. That was actually the reason I needed to ask. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay, number two. Um, who would consider themselves totally new in this space? Welcome. Glad you're here. Can you hand these to them? Um, that is the most fun place to be, and I'll tell you why um, in a little bit. Um, last question. This is a serious one. Um, who has been able to export retail link sales reports to match with supplier center sales reports in order to get a somewhat accurate view of your throughput allocated to Walmart e-commerce? <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> Somebody who's tried really, really hard. Okay, you get, you get the stickers. <laughs> uh, well, let's jump in. Uh, has anybody seen this little thing in their homes? Um, I love this. When does the new 50, 50 v 50 mode go live on Fortnite? 
Um, I love that this was front light on Forbes a couple days ago. Um, titles like The Capitalist Plan to End the Obesity Epidemic, A Sixth Sense uh, for Biotech has made, made uh, Joe Elderman a hedge fund star, and when the hell does 50, 50 v50 come to, to uh, Fortnite? Well, before Fortnite, um, there was a, uh, I don't know, mildly impressive multiplayer online role-playing game called, anybody know? World of, War, World of Warcraft. And uh, we're gonna take a look at, um, at this platform. Um, before Fortnite existed, um, this game is where individuals individually sit um, throughout their homes and they play in, on a platform uh, that can't be accomplished by one common player. Okay, so they're going up against the game. Uh, what I want you to do is really listen to these guys. First of all, this is one of the uh, most viewed YouTube videos on the planet. Um, and second of all, it's, it's been around forever. So uh, listen, enjoy. Okay, guys, uh, these eggs have given us a lot of trouble in the past. Uh, does anybody need anything off this guy, or can we bypass him? Uh, I think Leroy needs something from this guy. Oh, do he, he needs those devout shoulders? Doesn't, isn't he a paladin? Yeah, but that'll help him heal better. He'll have more mana. Christ. Okay, uh, well, what we'll do... I'll run in first, uh, gather up all the eggs so we can kind of just, you know, blast them all down with AOE. Um, I will use Intimidating Shout to kind of scatter them so we don't have to fight a whole bunch of them at once. Uh, when my shout's done, uh, I'll need Anthony to come in and drop his shout too uh, so we can keep them scattered and not have to fight too many. Um, when his is done, Bass, of course, will need to run in and do the same thing. Uh, we're going to need Divine Intervention on our mages uh, so they can uh, AE. Uh, so we can, of course, get them down fast because we're bringing all these guys. I mean, we'll be in trouble if we don't take them down quick. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think, Abdul? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32.33, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Oh, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, all right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or? do this. Leroy! Oh my god, he just ran in. Save him! Oh gee, stick to the plane! Oh jeez. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Stick to the plane, Jeff. Stick to the plane. Oh gee, oh fuck. Give me my intervention. Hurry up. Shout out. I can't oh. cast. I can't move with my lagging guy. I can't move. move. What the what the hell? I can't aim. Oh my god. The eggs keep taking more respawning. responding. I don't think you can cast with that shit. Oh my god. We got him, we got him. Get off. I got it, I got it. Get off. Come on, let's get off. Come on, stay on. Oh my god. God damn it, Leroy. God damn it. Leroy, you know it. Come on, Leroy. Jimmy. This is ridiculous. It's all mass. I'm down. Fork him down. God damn it. This is what I killed before I could leave. We died on this. God. Oh, Spiffy Rezus. Spiffy Rezus. Why do you do this shit, Leroy? I'm trying. It's not my fault. Who's Soul Stone? We do have a Soul Stone up, don't we? I mean, do you got Soul Stone? Uh, oh, God. Oh, for... <laughs> Great job. Oh, oh, for Christ's up. sake. Oh. Leroy, you were just stupid as hell. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. At least I have chicken. <laughs> um... So let's take a uh, let's take a look at this team's work. It, it feels a little bit like they're trying to run a bulk upload onto Walmart.com, doesn't it? <laughs> feels a little bit that way. Um, well, believe it or not, there's two kinds of people in this room. Those are stuck in the chasm of planning, whiteboarding, replanning, etc. Right? You got the got the you know the majority of your companies are back in headquarters and they're putting together these big, expensive macro plans. And then you've got uh, uh, the rest of us that are saying, screw it, I'm going to figure this out. Um, we've got both here in Bentonville, um, and that's what makes it fun. Uh, this discussion is designed to bring clarity to both sides. Um, but first, a little housekeeping. 
Uh, now that I've wasted about five minutes watching a wildly popular YouTube video and handing out stickers, um, I promise to make the next 40 minutes of your time well worth the ride. Fun fact, uh, within the 40 minutes that we remain fixated on figuring out the Walmart, Walmart global e-commerce landscape, Amazon bots will have run over 3.3 million scrape computations off walmart.com and made an estimated 1.65 million pricing adjustments in a single small category. <laughs> um, timing is everything, my friends. Uh, number two, no associates, no Walmart associates um, uh, were harmed during the making of this presentation. Um, it's important to note that my company, One Stone, no, nor I am in any way affiliated with Walmart. Um, the views and opinions expressed uh, today in no way represent Walmart's positioning. While I've been a dedicated fan and student of Walmart's global e-commerce phenomenon, the content of this presentation, uh, though pertaining to Walmart, uh, has not been sanctioned by Walmart. Uh, not sure a World of Warcraft video would have uh, made the Saturday morning meeting uh, cut. Next, uh, again, housekeeping items. Your work, your way. Everyone here comes from a different vantage point, um, has different set of challenges, and if you're looking for uh, the content of this presentation to solve that retail link problem that you're facing, um, you'll probably be super disappointed. That said, grab me or any of your new friends in this, in this room, pull them aside, and tell them what your real problems are. I guarantee you everybody's facing different versions of the same thing, and it's really fun to figure them out together, uh, myself included. Uh, there's, there's room for everyone on the nice list. Um, there's some flyers here and friends here that are, that are dedicated to serving you. There's a bunch of geeks like me who never were cool, and now all of a sudden e-commerce is cool, and we actually really want to help people. Um, uh, so the space is big, um, and when you've got uh, different people working with you, that's a good thing. Um, collaboration wins in this space. Um, it's how we uh, hacked through Amazon in Seattle, and it's, I believe, how we're gonna, gonna work here in Bentonville as well. Experts no longer exist. Um, surprise, even those of us who've been journeying for a while are absolutely not experts. Uh, supercomputers are making real-time merchandising decisions as we sleep. Uh, Clint and, and JD said that. If anyone you're speaking with claims to be an expert in the world of e-commerce, call them out immediately and walk away, okay? Um, collective learning is happening every day and that's why we're here. So just because I'm on the stage and you're not means nothing at this point. Let's go. The omni world of uh, Walmart platforms, playgrounds, and passageways um, fitting with the World of Warcraft theme. Um, it's time to chalk the field and get our, our language straight. Um, what does the world, word omni even mean? Um, what? Multi-channel. Um, it, it means all different sorts of things to different companies. It depends if you're at ConAgra or Hormel or P&G. Everybody, everybody defines it differently. Um, different definitions, um, how people within your organization, outside your organization, are talking about the Walmart ecosystem. Don't get hung up on the names. It, it, it just is what it is. Um, from a consumer perspective, uh, it's all one. Uh, Doug has led um, the charge in driving a transformative mindset within Walmart um, that their customers are everywhere, and I love that. Um, the image on the right really shows kind of that mentality. Um, you can touch a customer anywhere, anytime, and, and I love the way um, Walmart's moving in that direction. Um, however, on the left, um, uh, hold on just a second. However, on the left is represents kind of a breaking apart of the of the discipline that it takes to pull off what I'll call retail magic online. Okay, so what's happening is a lot of you guys are, are um, you know, again in big boardrooms trying to trace the customer journey, and at the end of the day. Uh, E-commerce is making a click and giving you my money. Okay, so let's get the basics right, um, and then we can work up the funnel. Now let's talk about Walmart. Life was so simple, wasn't it? And then these two guys came. This is one of my favorite pictures of all time. I love this picture. It was in Bloomberg, and I have it framed on my desk. Started making purchases, big checkbooks. And then this started happening. Walmart was no longer Walmart, it's Walmart Global E-Commerce. 
What does that mean? I don't know, omni, multi, something. There's a lot happening. And then it got even a little bit stranger. Walmart connects in with uh, Google Home. So all of a sudden I can uh, order stuff from Walmart on my Google Home. Has anybody tried to uh, ask an Alexa where the nearest Walmart is? Go home and do that today. See what you come up with. Hint, hint. She will tell you she doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's a war going on here. The other interesting thing that a lot of us have kind of swept over is, is um, Lord & Taylor. So Lord & Taylor is now using the Walmart uh, technology to sell through its own platform. Um, so what's interesting about the Lord & Taylor um, is years and years ago, Target actually sold on the um, Amazon platform. In 2006, Target broke away, and who knows what happened to their e-commerce presence. It went down the tubes. Did anybody know that, that Target was actually propped up on Amazon for all those years prior? Who knew, right? So what we have here is on the, um, is on the right is a, is a bunch of different representations of tech, data and connections. And on the left, we see Walmart's attempt at creating a seamless shopping experience, being connected every step of the way. So what gives? How do we, how do we address it? The guys did a good job of explaining the definition of platforms. And I would argue that a lot of us sitting in these seats um, are pushing buttons all day or having marketing people tell us the way we need to be working. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, a platform is, is a base upon which um, set of standards enable applications. And so when you think about Walmart.com, when you think about Walmart.com grocery, when you think about samsclub.com, when you think about jet.com, each one of those is a different playground um, with a different set of rules and regulations. Think about, think about it like um, Amazon being Apple and the Walmart ecosystem being Android. Apple built everything in-house, right? It's all a very closed system, uh, so it works differently. Walmart, on the other hand, has a different approach, using a lot of open source. And so these frustrations and this, this uh, friction that you're experiencing is completely normal, and it's actually a competitive advantage, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Let's talk about playgrounds. Uh, there is a study out there that says kids, when dropped off in the middle of an open playground without any fences around it, like hover towards the middle and, and don't explore at all which I wonder if my boys were in there, but neither here nor there. All that to say is once their fences defined, uh, the kids start exploring, and they start getting into mischief, and they start breaking things, and they start playing games that they wouldn't have played before. I would argue that as long as we understand the concept of platforms, push the boundaries of the playgrounds, know the rules, and then try to exploit them. Uh, certainly, that leads us to passageways. Who's ever played Chutes and Ladders? It's one of the most frustrating games on the planet, right? You know where you need to get. You need to, what is it? Yeah, you need to get that ribbon. I am very competitive. You have to get that ribbon, but you cannot get there. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I can never win this damn game. So what I want to talk about in terms of passageways is there's always another way. There's always a way to figure out what you need to do. And so those of us that are sitting there saying, you know, I'm a victim of my buyer, or I'm a victim, I'm stuck between San Bruno, I'm stuck between Hoboken, um, there, there is a way. Um, one thing I liken it to is, uh, and again, this is, this is to kind of build empathy towards, towards what you're dealing with. Um, who remembers when the iOS 11.1 uh, update released, and every time you use the letter I, it turned into something looking like a question mark? You guys remember that? This autocorrect uh, auto bug was no doubt some rogue existentialist programmer at Apple determined to uncover whatever, the, um, whatever I typed the word, I am then forced to question who I really am. Who knew that, right? Neither here nor there at this point. Um, but when people come to me and complain about um, things not working, I say, yeah, it's a computer. It doesn't work. It breaks, you build it up, it re-breaks. The picture on the right, Mike, you can, we call it the Picasso effect. And I'm sure each of you guys have experienced this. Your marketing team comes to you with just the perfect writing, all the bullets in the right order, 
Um, the pictures and titles are all just, just so. You finally get all your assets. You load it through the system, and it comes out looking like that. I mean, what are the chances? And you've got your boss calling you saying, hey, I hear you're live, and they look at it, and literally it's like an oven mitt description on a trampoline. I mean, am I right? Like, who's been there? It's crazy. Um, don't waste time being frustrated with it. What you do at that point is you say, okay, if this is happening to me, it's happening to everybody. And the name of the game at that point is speed. Um, speed, accuracy, and tactics. Um, the, game, the game has leveled, and the big guys no longer can move as fast as the small guys. So whoever, whoever discovers the secret passageways is actually going to win in this space. This is how it used to be at Amazon about five or six years ago. Um, and I, I'm telling you, um, the more disparate the space is, the more advantage you guys have. And first mover advantage in this platform is huge. Um, I'm going to give you three use case, use case examples that represent a combined scenario of clients that I've worked with. Um, and I'm going to show you how the concept of platform, playground, and passageways um, drove massive success without throwing a ton of ad spend into the mix. Just good old fundamentals that ended up yielding what I'll call SEM, search engine magic, uh, within the Walmart ecosystem. <coughs> Scene one, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. Recall June of 2016, uh, the uh, Made in the USA was, was revamped. Uh, everybody's all excited. Uh, it's all over the press, and uh, Walmart is determined to make a mark uh, as such. Well, a whistleblowing group comes out and says, well, actually, you know, over half of your products that say made in the USA aren't actually made in the USA. Um, and it was big news for about, oh, I don't know, half a second. Well, again, some programmer in San Bruno, destined to save the world, I don't think he's the same guy that worked at Apple, but some guy like that thinks, I'm going to save the day and push a button and kill everything that says made in the USA until it can be reviewed 100 times over. Makes sense, right? I mean, you're a programmer. You can do anything you want. Um, well, what happened was, uh, I don't know about you guys, but we ended up in this little conundrum. And what was weird about it is we weren't, saying, we weren't showing that our products were actually declined, which is where it got really weird. It just said that they wouldn't move forward. And, you know, if I'm like, if you're like me, uh, if, if your stuff stinks, you just want to know it. Well, at this point, you're, you're living in the land of ambiguity. So what we did was, um, hold on. So what we did was uh, we ran a scrape um, and triangulated that against what was happening on Amazon. Uh, and quickly were able to figure out that um, the words, quote unquote, made in the USA, were actually the problem. Um, we ran in, changed everything to made in America in our portfolio, and uh, rose to the top. For three weeks, the competition within the area um, were, were still wondering what was happening. In the meantime, we're clocking sales. Well, this is June, and I'm in a pocket knife category. Uh, hunting season's right around the corner. Uh, we did not stand a chance against the big guys, um, but because they didn't fix their stuff fast enough, uh, we rose to the top and we're still at the top. It's all about the flywheel. So in this case, um, Walmart was making the big push. Um, the country of, oh, so what did I know about the platform? We knew that, the pla that Walmart was making a big push toward Made in the USA. There was a rush to capture that area. In this particular category, um, specifically pocket knives, there's a lot of USA-driven merchandise. Okay? The playground, knowing the playground, uh, Walmart's uh, country of origin field uh, was an open-ended fill, not a drop-down menu. And Walmart's call for American suppliers would build off-platform buzz. And so we knew, you know, in the Google sphere and even on the Amazon sphere, that there was going to be a lot of search for Made in the USA. Whether or not it was directly product related or not, we wanted to capitalize on those searches. So the passageway we dug, and it was ugly, was a simple UI scrape cross-referencing which products in our category were recently de delisted, um, run commonalities across delistings to find the Made in the USA, and immediately ran a, buck, a bulk upload adjusting the country of origin drop-down field language and everything was relisted in 24 hours. Again, our competition in the category took three weeks to catch up. We didn't tell them. Second scenario, I'll call it Battle of the Brands. 
So uh, there would not be an e-commerce presentation without uh, picking on P&G. Um, a buddy of mine actually runs their, runs their stuff on Amazon, so I always I like to pick on him. Um, this is a great example of, oops, I'm not good at this. This is a great example of the worst spend ever. I search puffs, I get puffs, puffs, puffs. Oh, and then I pay to have puffs. How many have seen that on their product pages? Why do people do that? Anybody know? Because another uh, brand, a la, will conquest you and say, hey, if you're searching for puffs, I'll pay 10 bucks and I'll take over your puff spot. All right, so puffs plays a defensive move. That's cool. Well, we were brought in to, to talk through, like, just spending money to defend ourselves. Like, what type of strategy is that? Nobody has, has as much money as Proctor, right? I mean, raise your, money, raise your hand in here if you have more money than Proctor. If there's a Walton, you might have more money than Proctor. But in terms of ad spend, there ain't nothing like it. And so when you're playing up against a big guy like P&G, you got to beat him at your own game. And so what we were able to do is say, OK, well, why don't we stop defending our own space? Because people aren't actually searching for puffs anyway. They're searching for Kleenex. You know why? Because everybody calls a freaking tissue a Kleenex. OK, so let's revamp all the content, layer it in on the back end with, uh, with the word Kleenex. That took a monumental brand shift. Uh, now, it's not showing. It's totally legal. Um, but it is in the code. Uh, and then we say, OK, and then let's put what few measly dollars we have, Kimberly Clark, <laughs> um, and try and conquest them this way. So now, when you search Kleenex, um, it's not an obvious one for one, but you have a Puffs. Uh, you have a puffs, puffs option. And you know who had to start defending their own territory? P&G. So when we think about stuff like this, um, it's the way you think about it and the way you play. So in this case, let's catch up. Uh, Walmart was bidding for sponsored product listing. Listings is not as um, sophisticated as Amazon. OK, so, so we know the platform. Uh, Walmart site traffic is 10 times less frequented than Amazon. Um, and so we knew that if we'd made a strategic play on sponsored products within the Walmart platform, we'd get more bang for our buck. Um, it's not expensive, as expensive to play, and we could potentially take some share. The playground, um, the branded search bids were inexpensive. Um, and we knew that the Walmart shopper, um, thanks to a, a, a partner agency, um, on Walmart.com was also searching for Kleenex. So you know this, this play only works as long as you have the insights to back it up. The passage way that we dug was we adjusted our spend to proactively build category presence, forced our competition to run a defensive sponsored product ads, which I'm sure killed them financially. Um, and we re refreshed all content to reflect the, the new taxonomy and uh, character count density. Um, so did you know that in every product title you can actually have 200 characters? Um, nothing should really go th onto your site unless it has 198.2 characters. At that point, you get maximum search algorithm credit through walmart.com. So pretty simple, right? Well, start trying to shove that much uh, you know, accurate words about your product in, into a title, and, and you'll, you'll be in a different place. But um, there's tactics like that that are completely free um, that should always be taken in addition, and, and you'll hear about that type of stuff. Scene three, leaving on a jet plane. How many of you guys have been here? We've got the San Bruno office, we've got the Bentonville office, we've got Hoboken. I feel like I'm on a triangle in terms of flying around, trying to, trying to figure out where I'm, where I'm going. Um, and all the meanwhile, in terms of platform work, we've got Google right in the middle. Well, this is an example of a, of a product launch uh, within the beauty category where um, uh, we were caught between two buyers. You guys remember that a year or so ago, where kind of everything consolidated, and all of a sudden we were um, shipped out to Bruno, and then we were shipped back to Hoboken because they were consolidating all this particular cream under one particular buyer. OK, well, we had a launch coming, and the launch was actually um, uh, a product that had been sold at Target, and the Walmart in-store buyer needed us to, um, to bring it to life in Walmart in-store. Well, of course, the in-store buyer is calling us and saying, um, hey, I need to. Uh, 
make sure that my stuff's up online. Well, that buyer is not the same as the person that actually manages the entire portfolio of the calendar or the catalog. And I've got Google looking for my brand, and it keeps landing on Target. They've had it the longest. It's a legacy brand there. We're just introducing it to Walmart. Well, we knew um, that Jet um, already had been selling it. So what gives, right? It's my product. I never sold it to you, Jet. From what I understand, Walmart has not migrated the information because, again, all the platforms are broken. And even though they say that they can fly across the wires, they rarely do. Um, and so what gives? Well, in this case, uh, Walmart was queuing the category for a migration to Jet, of course. How many people have been queued for migration in the last year and a half? <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, Walmart brick and mortar buyer was looking for an in-store items to hit online with the mod set date pressure. Um, and the extended category of responsibilities had recently been centralized in San Bruno, which is always a bad thing. If you had a choice between Bruno and Hoboken, go Hoboken every time. <laughs> um, and the playground that we, uh, we established was the supplier center needed um, time to process. That Picasso thing was going, right? And so the second we loaded product up, it was getting all crazy. Um, Jet was already pulling the product forward via distributors, so Jet knew that this product would sell. They saw it selling on Target. What did they do? They went out and bought it and uh, sold it on their store themselves. And we needed Google Power to wrestle Amazon. So this product, um, again, we couldn't, we couldn't make hay within the Amazon space without spending a whole bunch of money. And so we thought, you know what, let's place a bet here. So the passageway we dug here is that Jet's item upload sheet uh, was in our system. We had one for a different category. I'm sure you guys all have one of those old, never throw any spreadsheets away. If a buyer sends, if any .com sends you a spreadsheet, put it in a secret spreadsheet file. It is amazing how often you can use those old spreadsheets and get stuff through the system. Simple, you can't do that on Amazon, but you can definitely do that with Walmart. They haven't figured it out yet. Um, the supplier center was loaded, um, load was executed and documented. So some people would argue that we did double work. We built the entire jet system, we loaded the entire um, supplier center, and we actually took all that documentation and we submitted both jet and supplier center to the Walmart brick and mortar buyer and linked the Bruno buyer. I mean, they couldn't get away. They had no option but to load everything at the same time. And so literally, we've got Bruno loading, we've got Hoboken loading, and we've got Walmart loading. Well, what did it come out like? A giant mess. But you know what? It was a heck of a lot easier to fix a giant mess that was already in the system than to wait around for, uh, for, the, for the green light. And so um, it's stuff like that, stuff that you don't have to be the one uh, on the Warcraft team that's building all the big strategies. Sometimes you just got to go. So in conclusion, there's always money in the banana stand. What that means, <laughs> who's, who, who knows the rest of development cult classic? I, we say that in our office all the time. If, if, if something is breaking, there is always money there. Um, your positions right now, you guys are the, the best ones to be positioned to fix things. Don't sit back on your heels and say it's not going to work. Put more manpower toward it. Hire high schoolers. Uh, grab a partner. Shoot, grab the person across the street that's, that's dealing with the same thing or in your same office building. If they're not in the same category, who cares? What I'm saying is, is that there's a lot of ways to make money on Walmart.com and to not drain your resourcing. Um, it's frustrating. But you know what? That's why um, the competition is fierce and why you can win. <laughs>